Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to thematic session 3B, local actors advancing the prevention. And as you may know, the theme of this year's annual meeting is preventing harm to children. And if you could join the keynote panels and the following presentation sessions yesterday and the area today, uh, I assume you noticed that the importance of local actors was highlighted in different sessions. Uh, in this session, we would like to hear the good practices of local actors advancing prevention. We will have uh, three presentations. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so we will have uh, three presentations to share good practice from different part of the world. So the first one is on national and local actors advancing prevention through greater implementation of the CPMS. And then the second one is preventing violence across the social ecological frameworks through grassroots network. And then the third one is prevention activities in local communities in Iraq. Uh, after those three presentations, we will have a breakout room discussions to have more deeper conversation about how we can advance the local level prevention initiatives. Uh, if you have a language preference for the breakout room discussion, again, please rename yourself in Zoom and then tell us which language you would prefer for the breakout rooms. Uh, if you have any difficulties, please uh, message to the producers in the chat so that they can assist you. Uh, and so uh, before diving into the presentations, we would like to do some ice breaking activities. So first, uh, we would like to know where you are joining from, but we want to kind of visualize the diverse participants on the map, hopefully. So to do that, you can use the annotate function in the Zoom. Uh, you see the if you see the top bar on your Zoom window, you can choose the uh, annotate function. You can you can choose the view options, then annotate functions, and then you will find the stamps. And in the next slide, can you go to the next slide? Yes. So please indicate where you are joining from using the stamp of your of your Zoom annotation. Yes, thank you so much. So, so far we're having a lot of participants from actually UK, I guess, and in Europe, uh, in, the, in the Americas, I think. Um, from Asia. I hope it's coming more. <laughs> so it's in the view options, you open it and there's annotate. And if you click annotate, then you can choose the stamps. Great. <laughs> now we are having great having from the middle east great i think it's keeping cruising thank you so much and then there are also people typing in the chat box as well great thank you okay so thank you so much uh it is good to know that we have people joining from different parts of the world. Uh, so next, we would like to do the very quick short breakout room discussions. Uh, so in your, group, in your group, please discuss on what are the challenges. <laughs> Sorry, I think we need to clear the annotation. Uh, in your group, please discuss on what are the challenges for the local actors to advance prevention uh, prevention on the child protection. Let me repeat the question. So what are the challenges for local actors to advance prevention programming for child protection? And once, uh, please link, click the link here on a group map and then uh, add the result of your uh, group discussion in this uh, group map seat. We will send the questions and then the link to, your, to each of your uh, Blackout room as well. 
Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome back to the plenary. Uh, I am sorry it was very short and quick <laughs> breakout room discussions, uh, but I think we got uh, different insights and inputs, and I think it's very helpful. So we have like a lack of data, uh, lack of the measurement for the prevention. Uh, we also have the lack of challenge to get a good evidence to sell prevention. Um, the, the community norms is also the issue. Uh, also, it is not prioritizing it. Um, and then maybe lack of the institutional capacity, lack of the funding opportunities. And yeah, lack of the funding, I think, comes several times. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those inputs. So, um, so I think we found that there are some of the challenges for local actors preventing the preventions. And then uh, based on that, uh, now we'd like to move to the presentation sessions and to hear good practice from the field and hope we can get some ideas and insights for those challenges. And then we can come back to the, uh, the discussion session after, after we do we finish the three presentations. So the first presentation uh, is on the national and local actors advancing prevention through later implementation of the CPMS. And it will be presented by Susanna Davis, co-lead for the Child Protection uh, Minimum Standards Working Group and Senior Human Interim Coordinator at the Save the Children. And Sara Matarazzo, Country Director and Legal Representative for Bethany in Colombia. Hussein Abdullah Salman, Deputy Executive Director and Glance Manager from uh, Bental Lafredin Organization, Iraq. Uh, we will have a short Q&A time after the presentation. So if you have any questions, please type in uh, your question in the chat box. Susanna, floor is yours. Thanks very much, Chizuru. And, and thanks also to, um, to Sarah and Hussein for, um, for joining me for this point, part of the session. We're really excited to share um, with you some of the great work that they've been doing and that we've been able to, to support together with them um, with the CPMS Working Group. Um, so I'm really happy to be uh, here to get, uh, today. As Chizuro said, I'm one of two co-leads for the CPMS Working Group at the Alliance. Um, and we've got more than 40 organizations from around the world um, that participate in and support the CPMS Working Group, um, including this great project um, called the CPMS Innovation Fund. Um, and both of the presentations that you'll hear after me um, from Sarah and Hussein um, will be about kind of creative new projects to implement the CPMS. Um, with a focus on driving forward implementation with national actors. Um, I will give you kind of a brief introduction of the innovation fund and sort of its overall aim and, re uh, and results. And then we'll hand over to Sarah and Hussein to share um, the really interesting work that they've been doing in their respective countries. So if we can go to the next slide, please. So as many of you um, might know already, um, the CPMS include a strong focus on prevention across all four of its pillars and each of its 28 standards. So this includes, for example, a strengthened focus on the prevention of key child protection risks, um, the mainstreaming of child safeguarding across all the standards, an emphasis on system strengthening and an entire pillar that's dedicated to working across sectors uh, to prevent and respond to children's protection concerns. So there's a great deal of work that's ongoing at the country, global and regional level to improve the implementation of the CPMS. But unfortunately, we've observed that particularly at the country level, some of the interagency processes to roll out or popularize the standards have tended to exclude or maybe fail to appropriately support the participation and really importantly, the leadership of national and local actors. So the CPMS Innovation Fund was created as one way to address this issue and to provide direct funding for creative projects that were led by and with national and local actors. So at the moment to date, we've provided sort of small grants of around 10,000 US dollars um, to support national and local actors in seven countries, including Iraq and Colombia, which you'll hear about shortly. 
and the creative projects that they have you um, they have implemented with these funds have used a range of, of techniques to drive forward implementation of the CPMS, including this key focus on prevention that I spoke about. So um, we're still in the early phases of some of the projects, but I think it's um, there are some kind of interim results that I can share, which really start to demonstrate that national and local actors leading the implementation of the CPMS and its popularization and rollout really has some unique and from our perspective, highly beneficial results. So the first is that national and local actors have brought new approaches to increase the accessibility of the CPMS to a broader audience. So through things like translating resources into a range of local languages or adapting messages to the context, uh, using podcasts, videos, and WhatsApp groups to reach out to a huge range and a diversity of local and national actors that previously didn't know about or use the CPMS. So effectively direct support to local and national actors to lead these initiatives sort of has an exponential benefit of then kind of expanding the group of, um, of colleagues in a response who understand the, the minimum standards and are able to use them in their programming. The second one that we've observed has been that all of the innovation fund um, projects have included a focus on some of the key preventative approaches that are included in the CPMS, like family strengthening or community level child protection, and increasing the skills of a wide range of actors on these approaches in line with the minimum standards has really contributed to um, a greater use of prevention programming in the response as a whole, and one that we hope to see continue to rise um, as we support kind of further capacity strengthening and exchange uh, around the CPMS. And the final point that we've observed, which I think is also a really important one um, for the CPMS, but also for the Alliance as a whole, is that all of the innovation fund projects have been able to strengthen collaboration with other sectors around mainstreaming and integrating child protection in line with CPMS pillar four. So as most of you on this call will be very familiar on how interlinked children's protection concerns are with the work of other sectors, whether it's livelihoods, health, education, food security, getting the leadership and the, the colleagues who are implementing programs in those sectors involved, engaged, having them use the CPMS to mainstream and integrate child protection into their programming is absolutely critical to prevention. So this is what we've seen so far, and um, we hope from the CPMS Working Group to be able to continue to work in partnership with national actors um, and to continue to um, support learning from the approaches they develop. So with that, I would love to hand over to Sarah from Bethany in Columbia to share the work that they've been doing there. Hi everyone, good morning, buenos dias from Colombia, good afternoon for you. I'm so honored to be invited to this event of the Alliance and have the opportunity to share the work that we are doing in CPMS Innovation Project in Colombia. Next slide, please. So I'm representing today Bethany. I'm the legal representative in Colombia and country director. So Bethany is working in child protection across the US for more than 76 years already and we are um, around um, the world as well we are in presence in different countries in colombia haiti ghana ethiopia south africa among others and we do care uh, for children and families we are providing services in child protection for migrants refugee children and families in need those escaping from violence and oppression in countries around the world Thanks, next slide, please. So in Colombia, we do serve migrants coming from Venezuela, and we include in our, our program um, of child protection, the host community as well. And those programs have a great impact of the population we serve, but local actors and governments do not always know the um, content of this manual and the international minimum standard for child protection. So this project, aim to raise awareness among beneficiaries 
Colombian government official and humanitarian actors, because uh, a lot of um, a, a lot of knowledge is missing, and uh, sometimes because of those lack of knowledge, the government and the local actors are doing arm action against those children. So given the constraints of COVID-19 and the limitation of in-person gathering, this creative project has been using digital channels to disseminate and increase implementation of CPMS handbook. And actually because all of the pandemic situation just strengthen the needs of those children and families in need and strengthen the barriers of languages and communication between the local actors that are serving every day those children and families in needs and the beneficiaries. So this approach will allow the project to benefit the key stakeholders, including NGOs, community organization, religious sector, and the refugee and migrant population itself. So we did specifically create and distribute impactful and informative podcasts videos and flyers and we have been doing and we are still doing trainings to all of the people interested in this manual. Next slide, please. So all of those products have been designed and produced a series of six podcasts that present the CPMS standards in a user-friendly experience. So actually we did uh, use two different kind of languages, uh, a technical language for uh, NGOs, Colombian government the stakeholders, and a more uh, simple um, language for beneficiaries, because actually we have to take into account the differences of uh, culture between Colombia and Venezuela and other migrants coming from Haiti and Cuba. So of course, uh, we did use a different languages. And in the videos as well, we could uh, strengthen the different uh, content of the manual according to uh, the audience that are our beneficiaries. Our beneficiaries are uh, from uh, different countries, but as well as we have a lot of women that are coming uh, from Venezuela. Uh, they are women, but they have many children. And uh, of course, they really need to know uh, their rights. They really need to know they, uh, how they can access to services, but especially they need to know how can protect themselves as well uh, from arm action from local actors as well. So we create again uh, the 28 flyers that, can, that are like including all of the norm of the manual. And we did post on the Bethany Colombia website, so you can find all of the material in our web page. And we did print the flyers, uh, even for stake stakeholders, the GIFIM, so international organization, local government and churches as well. It's very important to involve the so civil society and religious sector in all of these humanitarian action, training them with the minimum standard to avoid always arm action. So we are doing a virtual training and session and webinars with all of those actors to spread all of the content of this manual. So we collect lesson learned, evaluate implementation of CPMS. Next slide, please. So we are showing here very briefly uh, some example of uh, flyers and actually we are disseminating already in all over Colombia and beneficiary really love that. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. So I want just to say uh, muchas gracias to give to Bethany the opportunity to spread all of these important content with our beneficiary and stakeholders. And we hope uh, to continue to train all of the local lectors in this country to respond as much as possible and the best possible to our children and families in need. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Maybe we can just hand over uh, to Hussein from Brobe to present uh, their work. Yeah, thank you so much, Susanna. And thank you uh, all for attending uh, this session today. Uh, and thanks for this opportunity to Brobe uh, to talking about our uh, innovation uh, fund in Iraq. Uh, next, please. Uh, I will talking on, uh, on a brief about uh, uh, PROB uh, NGO. Uh, PROB is a national NGO established in 2005 in Iraq in, uh, in Babylon uh, Governorate. Um, we are work mainly on, uh, on the women, children and, and family issues and as well 
be working with youth uh, and adolescents. The core sectors of Probe that's working with it uh, is the protection on mainly, uh, it's including the GBV child protection and general uh, general protection. And also we work in the livelihood sectors and the adolescents and youth uh, development uh, uh, programs. Um, and also the uh, last sector that we're working on it is about the community peace and the reintegration uh, for the vulnerable uh, groups in the community and also working about the uh, campaign and the advocacy campaign about the developing of the pol uh, policies in Iraq. Uh, we are members in the alliance from 2019 and also we uh, active in Iraq with the child protection subcluster and also we are member in the uh, advisory group of the child protection in Iraq and the co-lead for uh, local working group in Baghdad and Zambar governorate uh, in Iraq. Uh, next please. Uh, for our innovation uh, fund activities, uh, our innovation is um, aimed to increase the access of human relations actors uh, in Iraq about the CPMS 2019 version uh, by the difference and the different smart ways. It's uh, including some of activities that uh, attractive activities. Um, we are on the on the beginning of uh, our. Uh, innovation or uh, the rollout of the CPMS. We are working in partnership with the child protection subcluster of Iraq to reach all the child protection actors uh, in Iraq with this innovation. Um, we, we prepared to the orientation uh, session uh, uh, in all the actors working on the child protection and also uh, other actors from uh, other uh, sectors such as wash education health and other to uh, to roll out the the brief uh, introduction about the cpms and after that we uh, working to developing a questionnaire to all child protection actors in iraq uh, to choose what is the main standards that important in the context of iraq to be uh, focused on it in the uh, rollout of uh, cpms in iraq um, we are uh, after that, uh, for this questionnaire, uh, participants on it, uh, 154 persons from the UN agencies, uh, international organizations, and also the national organization in Iraq. And uh, by this questionnaire, we're choosing uh, nine standards, um, the important standards in the context of Iraq to focus on it, to uh, roll out in Iraq. Uh, uh, we also, in the I will talking about the activities of uh, our innovation. Uh, one of that it's about the developing some of videos, graphic videos in the Arabic and Kurdish language about the CPMS uh, for the national and local actors. Uh, the second activity is about the designing and distribution uh, a guide for the uh, national actors. It is the booklet guide. It's a small booklet such as the passport to be on uh, on the pocket of uh, all child protection actors anytime in the field to to be a reference to uh, back in it if we, if if they needed any uh, more information about the child protection issues uh, and also um, the smart activities of our innovations it's about the developing uh, CPMS applications. This is a game based applications. We will um, put some of uh, some of games. It's including uh, many stages to uh, to prepare the the child protection actors and other for the CPMS. Uh, this is this applications now. It's uh, under process to uh, finish it, and we will uh, working on it by two languages, Arabic and English. And after that, we will uh, share this application with all actors uh, on the rounds of the world through the alliance. Uh, sure. Um, and also, I will talking about. Uh, I focus about the rollout of the CPMS and the uh, rollout of the standards in Iraq. We have a sum of webinar series about the CPMS. Uh, we're choosing nine standards. Uh, next, please. To uh, nine standards to focus on it uh, about the CPMS. Um, we're choosing. Um, 
this is, this is standards that choose by the child protection actors it's the physical and emotion, emotion emotional abuse the standard eight and the standard tw uh, 12 the child labor and also the child protection monitoring standard the sexual uh, gender-based violence uh, educational and child protection standards mental health and psychosocial uh, uh, distress standards and also the case management standards and uh, health and child protection standards and the last one is a group activities for the uh, well-being of uh, of children these are standards that um, the child protection partners choose it to be focused on uh, in iraq uh, next please um, the outcomes and the impact of our innovation, um, our innovation now, it's, um, it's continual for the designing of the brochures, videos, and the application, but for the rollout of uh, uh, webinars, it's, uh, it's done. We're targeting uh, more than uh, 800, 800 persons from the nomination actors to build their skills uh, in improvision and uh, uh, preparedness in, in, in line with these standards that I mentioned uh, it uh, to focus about the child protection monitoring to increase the quality uh, secondary provision program. Um, the, this uh, webinar targeting um, the national NGO, international NGO, and also the, the staff of the UN agencies. Uh, all these sessions, it's uh, done it's by using the electronic platforms uh, by Zoom to reach to all actors in the rounds of Iraq. Uh, and all this session is recorded. It's in the Arabic language, uh, and uh, we share it with the, all the actors to be a reference for them to another staff to back to uh, to them to benefit from it. And also, uh, the outcome uh, of our innovation to increase the number of type of national actors, especially national, with the knowledge skills about the CPMS because the CPMS. Uh, it's not uh, uh, known from not known from all the national actors. It is a good opportunity to reach uh, a great number of the national NGO to know more about the uh, CPMS uh, uh, standards and also to uh, depend it with uh, some of their programs. And the last one it's about the uh, integration, the CPMS and mainstreaming it with the, the other sector. Uh, such as the education and health actors engaged and trained with uh, our uh, sessions uh, and including their and also including their uh, allegation of uh, on the especially on the child safeguarding and the PSEA and uh, done some key, key action to in integrate it and mainstreaming the child protection uh, minimum standard with the program of the education and uh, and health. Um, I think it's uh, a great opportunity to uh, to roll out the, the new version of CPMS in Iraq. It's a good experience for uh, us. Uh, all these activities implemented in partnership with the child protection subcluster of Iraq. And um, uh, also many thanks for uh, the Alliance at this time, CPMS working group for uh, all supports. Uh, this is only brief about uh, our innovation, and uh, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity to talking about it in, the, in this annual meeting. Uh, our contact information in, uh, in the presentation, and also uh, we can put it on the chat to uh, reach us for any questions or uh, any uh, support that we can uh, do it. Thank you so much, and the floor is to you, Susanna. Thanks so much, Hussein, and I think um, probably a lot of colleagues on the call will join me in being just incredibly impressed by the huge range of actors. Um, 800 and, and bringing in colleagues from other sectors is, um, is a really impressive kind of reach in such a short time. Uh, so we do have a few minutes for, um, for questions. So um, I don't see any in the chat so far, but if any colleagues on the line would like to ask a question to Hussein or Sarah or myself, um, please feel free to, to put it in the chat box and we can take a few minutes to answer them now. And I know Sarah earlier, um, further, if you scroll a bit up in the chat box, I know Sarah shared 
a link to um, to Bethany's uh, website and some of the products that they've developed and Hussein has shared some of his contact information as well. So you're you're they're both happy to to be in touch if you would like to. While other people are typing in the chat box, uh, I actually have a question. I'm very excited to hear about this localized CPMS game applications. Will this be available in like an app store or like a Google Play store or how can I get it as it's ready? Yeah, sure. Um, now we, we are working on developing the programmatic and uh, designing of this application. It will be available on the app store and also with the uh, Google store. Uh, for the Android. It will be two versions for the Android and the iOS platforms. Great. And when, when we do do it and complete it, we will we will share it with the, all partners through the Alliance. Yeah, we'll make sure it gets up on, on the Alliance website as well so colleagues can find yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Um, I do see that there is one one question in the um, in the chat box and maybe I can uh, direct it to Sarah. Um, yeah, sure. A colleague is just asking if beneficiaries have been involved in developing some of the resources that you that you mentioned that Bethany uh, produced. Yeah, sure. So in Colombia, all of beneficiaries are always involved in our programs. Uh, at the beginning, like in the first phase of program design, in during the program, we do focus group and surveys. And at the end, for all of following all of the principle of accountability to affected populations. So for sure in this program as well, they have been involved and they really like the products, of course, are in Spanish. I forgot to say before. And yes, the language has been very understandable for them. So they have been participating and they're involved. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Um, I know that we were running a little bit over time, and I think we're just about on time now. Uh, so I might just hand back to Chizuro for the next colleagues. Great. Thank you very much, Zana, Sarah, for saying those wonderful presentations. So next, uh, we would like to hear the examples of preventing violence across the social ecological frameworks through grassroots networks. Uh, represented by Kezia McFarland, Children in Emergency Specialists from Viva, and then Anna Baker, International Director from Viva. Uh, again, we will have a short Q&A time after the presentation. So if you have any questions, please type it in the chat box. Kezia, floor is yours. Great, thank you. Um, so really happy to follow those brilliant presentations. Um, and today I want to talk about Viva's model of working through grassroots networks. Um, it's a model that harnesses and amplifies the impact of local organisations working to prevent violence against children. Um, next slides, please. And probably the next one too. Um, so our model brings together churches and faith-based organisations within a city to mobilise together against the key issues facing children in their context, while at the same time building each individual actor's capacity to prevent violence against children. Viva partners with 39 local networks in 26 countries worldwide. And on average, they each bring together about 100 local churches and grassroots organizations. And together, those networks are reaching 3 million children. Working together brings about change for children on a much larger scale than any one organization could achieve on their own. So today I want to share some examples of how our partner networks are working in primary prevention programs across each level of the socio-ecological framework so from the child, family, community and society levels and consider how a network model could be applicable in humanitarian settings as well. Um, so we'll start with the child's level um, and one of our key prevention programmes at this level is the End Online Sexual Exploitation of Children programme developed by our partner network in the Philippines. Um, this programme includes awareness raising for children and parents and it's delivered by trained youth advocates. This has been an especially essential program um, where COVID-19 has increased the economic pressures on parents, which can contribute to them allowing children to be involved in online exploitation. Our partner network there reported that during the pandemic, cases of online sexual exploitation of children have doubled. So we've got a short clip um, from a video of one of our youth advocates sharing about his involvement in this project now, hopefully. We are truly blessed to engage with the end online sexual exploitations of children's advocacy on behalf of youth advocates. 
It enlightened us that we should end this kind of heinous crime. There's a lot of things and experiences that I am proud of. They inspired me and helped me to appreciate diversity. Under the End OSEC project, I spearheaded an activity that gave knowledge and capacity building. Another thing that I am most proud of is the Kumusta na Youth, We Talk, We Thrive, and We Advocate for Children's Rights that aims to check the well-being of our advocates through peer-to-peer -peer conversations and the rollout of the Safety of Children online module. As of the moment, the PCM and Youth for Safety Youth Organization has a 556 strong voice or members that are knowledgeable and ready to be a catalyst of change. Great. Um, so as well as programs working directly with children, many Viva partner networks have this approach of trying to work with young people as well in the development and delivery of programs so that children and young people can be active participants in prevention. Um, next slide, please. Um, going to the family level. Um, yeah, Viva's partner networks recognize that working with parents and caregivers is one of the key ways to prevent violence against children. So many of the partner networks programs are targeting positive parenting or support to build positive caregiving environments or ensuring that children are growing up in families. Um, our phone mentoring program that was developed during COVID-19 reduced violence by combining parenting advice and support on issues like anger management, mental health and online safety with a chance for both children and parents to talk regularly with a mentor over the phone. This proved to be a lifeline in many cases when face-to-face -face support and existing support services weren't accessible and is still being used by more and more local partners as the pandemic continues. So we've got a short um, video clip from one of the children in India who was part of this project. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. वो हम लोगों को बहुत अच्छा लगा जिससे हम लोगों घर में बहुत सुधार आया मम्मी पापा प्यार से रहने लगे मम्मी पापा हम लोग के साथ वक्त भी गुजारे बहुत जब जिससे हम लोग पहले हम लोग मतलब वक्त नहीं गुजार पाते थे जिसने हम लोग की तो हम लोग सिलाई सीखे तो हम अपने मास्क बनाए और अधिकतर बच्चों को दिए मास्क बना के मिस से मिला हम लोगों को मिस बताए कि कैसे बच्चे लोग को हेल्प करना चाहिए गरीब बच्चों को हेल्प करना चाहिए yeah. So for the 12,000 families that so far have been reached globally by the phone mentoring program, we've seen more than 150,000 specific positive actions recorded by the families. And following the project, 25% of children reported less violence at home, and 27% of the parents said that they were now dealing with anger better. And many children and families talked about the improved communication at home, and that they're now enjoying spending time together. Um, next slide, please. So at the community level, because all the networks are made up of around 100 different churches and organizations throughout the city, it's really easy for them to work together to develop community level prevention programs. In Uganda, Viva's partner network has trained teachers and developed child protection capacity within schools, and they've developed child protection committees and established a system of community mentors for families, aiming to prevent violence across school, family and community settings. So our last video clip is from one of our network team in Uganda, if we could see that now. Green considers, one, uh, helping its network members to meet the nationally recommended standards of child protection, but also through the network members, Green has been able to reach communities at the, at the level of children and also adults. Children have been empowered as uh, child ambassadors to form what we call safe clubs. These are able to reach out other children in terms of protecting them and also preventing more child abuse. And then with the adults, they have been empowered as advocates through giving them child protection skills, but also uh, economic skills to be able to meet the basic needs of children ranging from education, food, uh, many other. And we're especially proud of how Crane is also having a significant impact beyond the community level, um, where the strength of the network means that they're beginning to also impact societal norms. So next slide, please. Um, through the Girls Education Challenge Programme, they've trained public school teachers in public positive discipline and creative learning methods. 
and recently through a partnership with the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, they've trained more than 400 public prosecutors in child friendly justice um, and have started setting up child friendly spaces within those regional centres so that children can feel comfortable in court proceedings. Um, and as well as these examples, our annual Good Treatment campaign, which began in Latin America, um, sees children taking the lead in asking adults in their city to sign up to five key actions for treating children well. Many partner networks have also successfully advocated for changes to laws affecting children and have trained government and public service officials. Networks act as advisors and implementing partners in developing new strategies for preventing violence, meaning that the voice of grassroots actors is amplified and when policies are developed, they're relevant and actually applied on the ground. For example, in Bolivia, networks partnered with the Education Directorate promoting prevention of violence against children and inclusion of violence prevention in the school curriculum. Um, and going back to that end online sexual exploitation project in the Philippines, the government um, was impressed by the pilots in three cities of that project. Um, and so the network is contributing to new legislation that will ensure all school children are educated in how to spot and stop online exploitation. And in 2020, the networks were able to influence 52 different laws and policies relating to children. Um, next slide, please. So these examples cover the different levels of the socio-ecological model, but I think what's really powerful about it is that each network includes a range of activities spanning all those levels at the same time as all of those individual members still doing really good quality direct work with children and communities at the grassroots level. Um, each of these outcomes have a deeper impact because the networks are rooted in those locations and they stay there, operating multiple collective action programmes. They continue to respond to the most pressing needs in their locations and build on the foundation of their strong roots in the community. And we've seen how this model, which we've used in a development context for the last 25 years, can transition successfully to a humanitarian context. Um, we've previously seen our networks respond collectively to natural disasters, such as typhoons in the Philippines or the earthquake in Nepal. And in the last 18 months since each network was forced to respond to COVID-19, um, each of them have been able to successfully pivot their actions sometimes being the only actors in their settings, continuing to respond and connect with children and families. Um, another example of that was in the recent lockdown in Uganda, Viva's partner network in Kampala was asked by the government to create safe spaces for children, knowing that they could rely on the network to mobilize and provide a safe, rapid response. So the approach of bringing together local actors and networks, focusing on preventing violence against children can be adapted and used as a foundation for humanitarian response if the networks are trained, resourced and equipped to respond effectively. Um, next slide, please. We're looking for ways to share our model with others, um, developing new partnerships to enable a greater reach of grassroots networks to proactively prevent violence against children. And we're hoping to train local actors to be champions for child-focused emergency response and partner with others um, in delivering support in emergencies through our partner networks. So do reach out to us if you'd like to hear more about that. Um, and I think we have a time for questions now. And I'm pleased that my colleague Anna Barker is here as well with me for those. No. Do we have questions in the chat? Yeah, thank you very much, Kizia. Uh, I think we have a question from Anne saying, uh, is there something to share on how you do programs on inclusion of violence prevention in the school curriculums? And then I think now, Jason, uh, how does the country where you work, the legal framework align with the community level structure who are dedicated to child protection, uh, community-based child protection committees? I might let my colleague Anna answer those if I'm able to. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Kezia. Um, and thank you for the questions. They're both really brilliant. Uh, in terms of the question around aligning um, kind of legal frameworks with community level child protection, I think that's often a huge challenge because often governments will have you know, good laws and policies in place, but it is their implementation within communities that is more challenging and even um, at, at the community level, understanding the laws and what's available. Um, so one of the things we well, our partner networks have been doing have been to develop child protection committees. So in Uganda, for example, child protection committees have been developed and they will include representatives from the partner network. So the churches and organizations, local grassroots groups, as well as police, um, also the uh, kind of public prosecutors 
and children and young people and, and um, kind of community council leaders all coming together to talk about child protection issues. And uh, if they receive concerns about child protection, they are then well connected to be able to look at what's available, who to refer cases to and respond. Um, so it's partly about just building that communication and understanding between different parts of the community. Um, yeah, to make that align then and make the best use of legal frameworks available. Um, so I don't know if that answers the second question, but that's kind of one example. In terms of uh, sharing, sorry, just reading the question again, how, yeah, in, in terms of influencing the school curriculum uh, with violence prevention, I think many of our partner networks aren't necessarily working with kind of government curriculums in most cases. However, again, in Uganda, that is where our largest um, network education program is. They have been able to influence. Um, so they're doing official training with mainstream teachers on violence prevention. And we have a number of programs um, teaching about child protection and developing good systems within the schools. So that's kind of at the school level. In terms of teaching children and young people, I don't think we have particular programs on that yet that we're promoting in the curriculum. But it's a really good question. It would be great to think about how to do that better. So thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. I think we have two more questions coming up uh, about all the funding uh, and then also the classification of local actors take into account the local government technocrats and public service actors. Mm. Um, so in terms of funding, we actually work on a very partnership-based relational kind of model. So Viva as an organization, we kind of have long-term coaching relationships with our partner networks. Sometimes we seek seed funding for projects to help them get going. Um, but we're also really aware that these networks are, you know, really powerful. We don't want them to be reliant on Viva for funding. So most of our partner networks are seeking funding from elsewhere as well. Um, and where we can, we can find funding for specific projects, but it's not kind of a Viva funds everything that our partner networks do. Um, and in terms of the classification of local actors, Kezia, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, yeah, so the partner networks are based on very, very grassroots organisations usually. So often local actors that other people might not think of working with like really small local organizations and churches um, but actually often as the network grows they do start to involve higher level organizations as well so you'll see a big mix of that um, I don't think usually you wouldn't have correct me if I'm wrong though like government actors being part of the network but there might be bigger organizations in the networks and then they gradually build relationships as much as they can with any of those actors so they might become part of projects that we work on the networks work on together with those um, um government and yeah public service actors so we've got several of those projects like the end sexual exploitation project involves those kind of collaborations I hope that's clear yeah and there's a definite kind of desire to be working closely with local government mm -hmm. um, but it would be the network representing those grassroots groups and then joining the conversation um, with government and other city leaders Thank you very much. Uh, are there any other questions? Please type in the chat or you can also raise your hand. Uh, if not, I can move to the next session, next presentation. So thank you very much, Kasia and Anna. Uh, it was great that we could learn the different cases uh, of the field level prevention activities in different countries, actually, in the Philippines, in Uganda, in India, and in I, I love to see those, uh, the children, the voice of children and young people in the video as well. Uh, also, I think it was good to hear the examples of prevention initiatives targeting at like a different levels of social ecological model, uh, the targeting at the children, the children and the family or community or the society level. Great, thank you so much. So uh, we have the last presentation, uh, which is on the prevention activities in local communities in Iraq, will be presented by Zahla Tassin. 
a program manager of Bent Al Lafedin organizations in Iraq. Zahra, floor is yours. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm happy to uh, be with you at this important uh, event. I'm uh, Zahra Tahsini from Iraq. I'm a uh, child protection specialist and uh, child program manager at Winter Rafidain Group uh, Organization, a national uh, organization established in uh, Iraq uh, and concerned with, with the issue of uh, child, women, and uh, peace building, as my colleague Hussein uh, previously uh, mentioned it in his uh, talk. Next, please. Through our work at Brog, uh, we work on uh, provision activities um, in local community by uh, voluntary program and uh, funded program. Next, please. Uh, about our work in funded uh, program, uh, first of all, we focus on uh, implemented activities uh, to children at uh, risk of joining arm, uh, armed group. We targeting uh, 50 girls and boys in the uh, Najaf area uh, through a skills development program, uh, vocational activities, and uh, C funding for uh, business startup. Next, please. And uh, we also work with the government to amend uh, the juvenile law to be more uh, just and uh, protective for children, where uh, we will work to amend some uh, articles in this uh, juvenile Iraqi, uh, Iraqi juvenile law uh, related to homeless uh, girls, uh, as the certain situation is very bad uh, for them because uh, they are uh, treated as criminals and uh, they are subject to uh, uh, restoration uh, in government institute. Uh, so uh, this uh, amendment is part of uh, an advocacy cam uh, campaign. We are implemented uh, to pressure on uh, Iraqi government to amend uh, these uh, legal uh, articles. Next, please. Now we were talking about the activities uh, uh, that we implemented in a voluntary uh, program. Uh, we implemented training for uh, teaching staff on uh, child, uh, children's rights, uh, child safeguarding uh, policy, safe response uh, to children's uh, pro uh, problems, and the best interest of the child. Uh, the teachers conferred uh, that the importance of uh, child safeguarding policy and having this policy in their uh, schools and uh, they need to make it uh, official by the Ministry of Education. Next slide, please. Also, we work to provide free uh, consultations for parents and raising uh, children and uh, go to communicate with them. Uh, most of uh, this uh, consultations show uh, that parents uh, do not uh, know uh, how to uh, properly uh, how to commun uh, communicate uh, in the right way with their uh, children, and the majority of uh, them suffered from the negative uh, impact of the local community on children. Next slide, please. Uh, also, in one of the uh, lovely uh, activities that uh, we implemented in uh, our uh, voluntary program, uh, we targeting uh, children in uh, training program, program to develop their uh, life skills and work to increase the children's uh, resilience. Uh, in this activity, uh, we aimed to uh, targeting uh, children without any uh, protection pro problems because we want to uh, prepare them if they uh, they face faced uh, any uh, issue or trauma or problems in their future, uh, they will be ready to, uh, to, uh, to face it and they have the, the, the good resilience to, uh, uh, to deal with this uh, problems or uh, trauma. Next, please. For com uh, community, we implemented the awareness uh, campaign for adolescents and also for the local community about the uh, risk that lead uh, to children getting into trouble with the law and uh, maybe they will uh, get into the detention centers. Uh, so we do that through uh, awareness uh, workshop, uh, posters, and awareness about uh, broad uh, reporting uh, mechanism if a uh, child uh, face any uh, protection uh, risks, he can uh, communicate with us and we uh, will support him uh, immediately. Next, please. 
During the period of uh, home quarantine uh, due to uh, COVID-19, we are implementing a training session for uh, parents on positive uh, parenting, uh, ways to protect uh, their children, and how to deal with children's uh, problems, uh, and how to uh, determine the child's best uh, interest by using uh, electronic uh, platforms such as Zoom and Facebook. Next, please. Uh, when we implement this, uh, this all activities, uh, we can uh, reach some of uh, or um, uh, implement some, some of the success story, um, like one of the private schools uh, clarified that they will depend some of uh, uh, some of articles from child safeguarding uh, policy and uh, the case management system in their uh, work with children. And uh, seventy percent uh, of uh, parents confirmed that they uh, benefit. Uh, greatly from the consultation and uh, the children who uh, start a small project uh, after month of uh, their month of uh, their work uh, they began their work began bigger and grow uh, and some of uh, them return to school in addition in his uh, work uh, and uh, other uh, some of this uh, adolescent uh, they can be uh, they can protect their uh, other uh, sisters and brothers who still children and uh, they uh, uh, don't let them to uh, leave the schools. Next slide, please. We also face uh, some of the uh, challenges uh, during implementing all these activities. Uh, one of them due to COVID-19, we face some of the uh, challenges in implementing the activities that lead us to carry, uh, carry out special activities with uh, parents uh, remotely uh, in order to provide uh, PSS for them and uh, uh, guide them on how to deal with the uh, children during uh, quarantine and uh, how uh, deal with their, uh, their needs and how to uh, give them uh, uh, PSS uh, during uh, uh, home quarantine. And also we face the lack of uh, funding the provision uh, project and lack uh, of interest and knowledge of uh, importance of primary uh, provision by uh, government, local community, and also even by uh, NGOs. Next slide, please. Uh, we are still in the first steps. Uh, primary uh, provision in Iraq needs more efforts and uh, uh, programs and uh, projects. Uh, we hope that uh, the achievements will be uh, greater and better uh, than uh, uh, next uh, year. Um, my presentation is uh, finished. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, listening. And uh, me and my colleague Hussein ready to uh, answer uh, any question uh, you have. Thank you very much, Zahra. Uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, please add it in the, the chat box, or you can also just uh, raise hand, use the raise hand function on the Zoom. Any questions? Myself, I, I find it's very interesting to hear your story and it's like, you know, really uh, the local level initiatives happening in Iraq. Um, it was the different initiatives on like a life skills training, positive parenting program, like awareness raising campaigns. And I think it was also Good to learn the challenges that not only the success stories, but you also highlighted the challenges. And there was actually uh, the, the similar things was highlighted in the first breakout discussion as well. That some of them are uh, like a lack of understanding on prevention. Uh, it, the, you know the, the the importance of prevention from the mostly from the government or the other stakeholders, and then uh, also lack of the funding. Uh, Hussein, do you want to add anything? You, you yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and also, uh, now we're planning uh, with the provision advisory group to uh, testing the provision frameworks in in Iraq on that uh, two stage. It's one one of that's 
uh, by do the consultation sessions uh, in cooperation with the child protection subcluster in Iraq to, uh, to consult the child protection actors about this uh, provisional framework paper. And also we will working on testing this framework uh, by choosing uh, uh, some, some steps of the uh, program cycle to testing this framework to uh, benefit from the feedback, feedback from the field. Uh, if it's okay or if it uh, will be many comments to be more elastic uh, uh, and implement it, it and to finalize the draft version of the uh, provisional framework. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hussein. I think we got a question from Audrey asking, we want to hear more about the activity of big brothers, sisters looking after the youngest children. Uh, Zafa? Okay, uh, let me uh, clarify that uh, point. Um, the, we are targeting this activity, uh, the uh, adolescent uh, child, not the child who, uh, uh, Younger, no, we uh, targeting the adolescent uh, girls and boys who are um, uh, from the um, uh, more uh, from more um, poor people. Uh, they were uh, uh, left uh, or uh, uh, left the schools because they want to work, and uh, they have uh, labor. Uh, uh, child labor, uh, we work on them, uh, develop their skills, and uh, we give them uh, some uh, uh, C funding to uh, start their uh, business. Uh, of course, the business that they uh, work on it, uh, it is uh, the safe business with the limited hours, and uh, um, it's uh, proper for their, uh, for their uh, life, uh, for the skills. Uh, so when uh, when their their work success and uh, uh, get uh, bigger, uh, they uh, their economic situation uh, uh, was become uh, more uh, uh, become better uh, also. So the other uh, other children and in, in family uh, like uh, their sister and uh, brother, uh, they don't left school. They stay in schools and uh, co uh, communicate and. Uh, they complete their uh, education in schools. I hope it's uh, it's good. And if uh, uh, Hussein can edit anything else, yeah, I think I think it's okay. I I not have uh, any addition, but I will answer for the second question from uh, Sita. Uh, for the live skills program for children, we depending some of modules that developing. Uh, from the international NGOs, such as the, we depending the resilience program, uh, child resilience, it's the developed from the Save the Children, and depended in Iraq and the child protection subcluster to uh, provide the life skills. Uh, some of the structure PSS is including some of sessions about the life skills, and uh, also the program of the World Child is ideal. Uh, it's have some of sessions about the life skills also. Uh, for the adolescent, uh, uh, UNICEF developed in, in Iraq uh, adolescent toolkits. It's uh, uh, working with the uh, girls adolescent, some of sessions, uh, some from them, it's about also the life skills. This is only brief. We we depend these uh, modules, and uh, also we developing some of sessions, training sessions inside uh, of abroad uh, to provide the life skills uh, because we have a uh, capacity building units in abroad, developing some of material about the life skills uh, to children, uh, and painting it in in our projects. I hope that the answer is uh, okay. I'm afraid. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much, Zaha and Hussain. Uh, are there any other questions you want to ask? Okay, uh, if there's no more questions, then I want to uh, move to the next uh, the discussion session. So thank you very much, Zaha and, and Hussain for sharing uh, your, your stories and your, your, your experiences. So, uh, now, so we heard several good practice from the fields, and uh, we also discussed about the challenges as well. Uh, so based on that, uh, now we would like to move to the breakout room discussions. And in the breakout room, uh, we want you to discuss those three questions. 
Uh, so the first question is, what are the barriers on the collaborations between international and local actors in advancing prevention programming for child protection? And the second question, sorry, it's all listed one, but the second question is, what would be the role of international actors, also including the Alliance, uh, to advance prevention activities in local communities together with the national actors? And then the third question is, what can you do, what can you do in your role to strengthen national and local actors' role in prevention program for child protection? So I think today we have uh, different participants uh, joining from different countries and from the different roles. So in your own role as a national actors or as like international actors or the donors, uh, what can you do to strengthen national and local actors role in prevention programming for children and child protection? So, so you will have about 15 minutes for the discussion. And then again, uh, please add the results of your group discussion on the group map link here, listed here. Uh, we will also send those uh, questions and then the link in each of the, uh, the, the, the breakout room uh, chat as well. So if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the chat box or you can also uh, ask help to the producers. Yes, so I think we are back. Great. Yeah, so I hope you had a great discussion in the breakout room. Uh, I can quickly go through the, uh, the, the group map listed here. You can also click on those inputs and then you can like or add additional comments to those as well. So on the first question, what are the barriers on the collaborations between international and local actors in advancing prevention program for child protection? Um, we have some inputs, oops, we have some inputs on the uh, coordination uh, is needed to, uh, between the international and local actors. Um, yeah, including like the, the, the programs of the communication between those two actors. Um, and then, yeah, there's issue of the different priority areas of work. Uh, and also the lack of understanding from the international partners about the local context, including the protection issues. Uh, also the cultural barriers was highlighted. Uh, and then, yes, so the, this, there was difficulties selecting who to partner with when there are many people working in the field. Uh, and then also lack of spaces, opportunities to interact between those two actors. Uh, unbalanced partnerships, uh, lack of power sharings uh, from NGOs and then the international actors, uh, and lack of alignment with the strategies, capacity to collect packages, evidence based, lack of evidence based, that is also highlighted here. And then I think uh, the key point is also about on the funding. So funding is not accessible to the local actors, or some of the requirement is too, too detailed or too strict and difficult for, for local actors to access the funding. Or well, sometimes uh, they need some support to, to align their program to fit to the, the funding requirement of the donors. Um, there's a few points about the capacity building, and but also it's good to see this inputs on that might be there are stereotypes to both international and local actors that you know that local actors need the capacity building and then i think six people already like this idea so i think that's also a good point to think about and then for the second question uh, what would be the role of international actors including the alliance to advance prevention activities in local community together with the national actors uh, we have inputs on the long-term commitment to the long-term partnerships. Uh, international actors should empower national actors. Uh, we, we should have more equal partnership among INGOs and national organizations. Um, and then develop mindset of the preventive prevention activities. Uh, yeah, so there are several points on the more balanced partnerships uh, about the capacity building and then also the evidence generation, uh, also advocacy with donors uh, and then also to increase the funding more accessible to the local actors. Uh, 
uh, and then there are other things, uh, better mapping of organization and see how best work could work together. Uh, and the partnering should start early in a cycle and the mapping with the local partners. And then, yeah, uh, several things on the, the evidence generation to share success stories and do the advocacies and to uh, at the advocacy to generate understanding on the value of prevention. And lots of very important inputs here. And then the, the last question is, what can you do in your role to strengthen national and local actors role in prevention programming for child protection? So like they are on the advocacy uh, efforts, the capacity building to have more equal partnerships, um, international actors engaging uh, communities together with national actors on the behavior change communication. Yeah, so when we talk about the local actors, we do not only mean the local NGOs, but other actors, including like youth association, women associations, uh, not only the formally structured actors, I think it's a very good point. And see what, what uh, where it can bring local child protection actors and message into the other prevention and dispatch reaction opportunities and discussion. That is very interesting, important point. And the mainstreaming of the prevention activities, all program cycle steps and those things. So we have very good uh, important inputs. And then I think that is uh, very helpful uh, for us as the Alliance to understand what are the needs uh, and what are the challenges on around this topic. And I also hope those, this session was helpful for all of you to kind of hear the success stories from the field and then also to discuss what we can do, what are the challenges and what we can do to advocate, uh, to advance the local prevention initiative in, in from each of our role. So we already passed the time, uh, so we have to close the session. Uh, thank you very much for the presenters first to sharing the good practice and the insights. Uh, and then also I would like to thank all of your, uh, the, the participants joining the session and then also uh, engaging in the active discussion. So it's very helpful. So we are closing the session and the next session will start in 30 minutes from 3.30 Geneva time. And there will be a three thematic session so you can click the one that you want to join uh, in a field of space. So thank you very much for joining and then hope I can see you in the next session. Thank you very much.